Hello creepy friends, this is Britt and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on my October reading journal setup. And as you can see here, I had a little bit of a mishap with recording. I did not record the beginning part where I was coloring in some of the first pages. I thought I was recording, but I wasn't, so that's okay. It was just coloring in with markers, so we will move on from here. And before we get into the details of what I'm doing here, just our usual announcement that all the materials that I'm using will be linked in the description box if you're interested in seeing what any of those are. Okay, let's get started. As you saw from the intro, I'm doing something very colorful and bold and graphic this month. And I went through probably about four or five different ideas for the theme for this month. And although I am usually into spooky season a lot, and that's like why my channel is named what it is, um, I just wasn't really feeling the traditional spooky Halloween vibes this year. And artistically, that's not something I was really interested in making. So as I was thinking more about October and thinking about pumpkins as a theme, I just kept coming back to Yayoi Kusama's art. Yayoi Kusama is a very famous Japanese artist, and her art is usually very colorful, very bold, very graphic, and usually has a lot of polka dots involved. And she has a whole series of many different kinds of paintings and prints and sculptures of these colorful pumpkins. So that's what I'm doing this month. It's kind of an homage to Kusama. And I will pop some photos up on the screen here so you can see some example of Kusama's art. And as you can see here, I am using acrylic paint pen so that I can get those really bright, bold, uh, saturated colors. And then I'm also using my Sakura Pigma Micron fine liners in a couple of different sizes to do a lot of the black since my black acrylic paint pen is almost dead. My concept here was to do a couple of different uh, segregated sections with different pumpkins in them, kind of like Andy Warhol-esque pop art kind of a thing where you have the different kind of grid with the different pictures inside of it. And also kind of uh, got that idea from thinking about comic book illustration as well. And you can see that I'm going to have the monthly calendar on the left hand side and then the right hand side will be the title page. Yayoi Kusama uses a lot of different patterns in her art, a lot of repeating patterns. So um, although the backgrounds that I'm making behind these pumpkins are not necessarily exactly something that she has done, I thought they fit in with her theme fairly well. And this one is just a squiggly line made up pattern that I decided to put in the background. And then the next one you'll see me doing in a second is kind of a fractured looking geometric background. That one is more based on some of her art that I have seen. I am a huge fan of modern art. I enjoy it a lot. I, I like art that kind of makes you think a little bit and might, you might not be able to get it right away. You kind of have to ponder it for a little while. Um, yeah. So I'm also starting to get into art more in my hobby life. So I have started doing watercolor painting. So hopefully in the future, I will be able to incorporate that a little bit more in this channel. And maybe next year, I might be able to incorporate it actually into my journal a little bit more. But right now when I'm doing a painting in watercolor, it's taking me a really long time. So I need to get a little bit faster at that, I think, before I start putting it in some of my videos. Two of my favorite uh, painters are René Magritte, who 
did a lot of surrealism and he, ha he has a lot of famous paintings. I'm sure you've seen them. Uh, I'll pop a few up here for you to see. Uh, he has the famous, this is not a pipe painting. And also um, Edward Hopper is another big favorite of mine. He is also famous uh, American painter and his most famous painting is the Nighthawks. Uh, I really enjoy both of their art styles because they give you that uncanny feeling. It's like real life but slightly off somehow. Um, so I really like that. I like art that like if you just glance at it real quick it looks like nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary, but if you look at it just a little bit longer, you start to notice something strange about it. So if you have a favorite artist, I'd love to hear who that is and what your favorite piece of art is and why you enjoy it. So please go down in the comments and share with everybody. Here's some information about Yayoi Kusama from Sotheby's. Kusama was born in 1929 in Japan. Yayoi Kusama's iconic polka dots are inspired by a hallucination she experienced while looking at a tablecloth as a child. The artist claims that she began painting these dots after a childhood psychiatric episode. One day, I was looking at the red flower patterns of the tablecloth on a table when I looked up and I saw the same pattern covering the ceiling, the windows, and the walls, and finally all over the room, my body, and the universe," she recalled. I felt as if I had begun to self-obliterate, to revolve in the infinity of endless time and the absoluteness of space. Kusama studied traditional Japanese art. The radical contemporary artist trained in a strict academic environment, leaving home in 1948 to attend the Kyoto Municipal School of Arts and Crafts. There she studied in a rigid master-disciple structure, which Kusama unsurprisingly found dogmatic and depressing. Georgia O'Keeffe was her friend and advisor. The celebrated painter of flowers and animal skulls was an astute businesswoman in addition to being one of the most famous artists of the 20th century. The ever-keen Kusama began penning letters to O'Keeffe during the 1950s. Then in her 20s, Kusama asked for advice about how to succeed in the New York art world. O'Keefe counseled Kusama, going so far as to encourage her own dealer to buy several of her works. During the 1960s, Kusama climbed the Brooklyn Bridge clad in a polka-dotted leotard in protest of war and the deleterious effects of capitalism. Living in New York at the height of the Vietnam War, the artist orchestrated a number of protest happenings. In her anatomic explosion, a host of naked dancers handed out anti-capitalistic statements in front of the New York Stock Exchange. That same year, she held a naked crossing of the Brooklyn Bridge, followed by the unsanctioned Grand Orgy to Awaken the Dead, in the Museum of Modern Art's Sculpture Garden, which was so raucous it made the cover of the New York Daily News. Kasama has lived in a mental hospital, by choice, since 1977. When she returned to Japan in 1973, Kusama suffered a mental breakdown. She checked herself in 1977 into Seiwa Hospital in Shinjuku, Tokyo, where she has been living ever since. Her art studio is within walking distance. She calls her webs of polka dots infinity nets and sees them both as a conduit to the infinite and a form of obliteration. Of her practice, she once remarked, all of us live in the unfathomable mystery and infinitude of the universe. Pursuing philosophy of the universe through art under such circumstances has led me to what I call stereotypical repetition. She is a published author and even created an erotic newspaper called Kusama's Orgy. She has published eight novels and several books of poetry in her lifetime. Her autobiographically inspired novel Manhattan Suicide Addict was based on her years working as an artist in New York City while her 1983 novel, The Hustler's Grotto of Christopher Street, won a new Writer's Award. She's also a filmmaker. Her dream psychedelic 1967 film, Self-Obliteration, was well-received, 
She has also collaborated with the music legend Peter Gabriel, whose 1994 music video for Love Town is based on her artistic aesthetic. One of her famed pumpkins was shattered by a selfie gone awry just days into her 2017 Infinity Rooms exhibition. Soon after her 50-year retrospective opened at Washington, D.C.'s Hirschborn Museum and Sculpture Garden, a viewer lost his footing while trying to get a good angle inside her infinity room, All the Eternal Love I Have for Pumpkins, resulting in the uneternal demise of one of the artist's iconic pumpkins and a ban on photos inside of the room. And finally, Kusama is considered the most successful living female artist. With hours-long lines to enter her museum and gallery shows, there is certainly no doubt that Kusama is a crowd favorite. This has translated to commercial successes as well. Kusama boasts the highest auction prices of any living woman artist. The highest price for any woman artist, living or dead, belongs to her mentor, Georgia O'Keeffe. Next, I'm using a white Posca pen, which is another type of acrylic paint pen, to do a nice thick bold white line around these pumpkins. And I just thought that they weren't popping out of the background quite as much as I wanted, so this is my solution for that. And this thick bold outline of the objects is not something that I've seen a lot in Kusama's art, but it's more inspired by comic book art. So I am combining a couple different things together here. For the letters for the title, I needed them to be able to stand out from this black and white dot background, and that's a little bit difficult to do to get something to pop out from that. So I used black paper and that same thick, uh, thickest size white Posca acrylic paint pen to do the letters, and I think that worked very well. You can actually read what it says here, so success. And that's it for the cover page. Now we're moving on to the pages that I'm going to use to paste in the book covers for the books that I read in October, and also the statistics for October. So on the left hand side I will be putting the stats, on the right hand side I will be putting the book covers. And for this one I'm doing a larger pumpkin here and I'm actually making it look more like a Kusama part. Uh, pumpkin than my ones on the first page did. So this is more of a direct copying of her style, a little bit more than an interpretation that I did on the front page. And then for the statistics for this left side here, my idea was to put circles, uh, since we're in a polka dot theme here, to put circles of black paper and then I'll be able to write the statistics on them with a white pen. But it was a little bit too plain for me, so as I was playing around with it, I decided I'll have a little bit of color popping out from behind these dots.
And as I finish up these spreads, I am going to move on to the next page, but I will be returning to this spread because I thought there's a little too much blank space, so I will come back and add some more polka dots in later. And now we're moving on to my book review page, and I usually have space for six book reviews on this spread. So again, we're continuing with the polka dot theme, and I decided I wasn't going to do every single color of polka dot here because that would be too crazy looking and it would look too much like Wonder Bread packaging or, some, or clowns or something. I didn't like the idea of that. So I decided just to use two colors here. All the polka dots are going to be blue and I decided on blue because this is the paint pen that I have used the least and hence it has the most paint in it and I still almost ran out by the time I colored in all these blue polka dots. So that's why I chose that one. And I cut out a lot of the video here because you don't need to watch me do the exact same thing 20 times here. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of coloring in blue dots and then we will move on to the frames for the book review sections. So I'm going to come in with the pink acrylic paint pen and then do the frames over top of this to give a nice, um, bold, colorful look to this page. But it's also very simple. Thanks for sticking with me on this video. I know this is very different from the normal style of art that I do in my journal, so it might not be to everybody's taste. But I really had a lot of fun doing something a little bit different. I need a lot of variety. <laughs> I get bored really easy. And it was fun kind of taking some inspiration from fine art and including that a little bit in here. And using some more bold colors because I have been using a lot of neutrals lately. pretty much wraps up my reading journal setup for October. In a second here you'll see me adding those extra black polka dots to the previous spread to fill in the blank space. I hope this unconventional looking setup was interesting for you guys and that you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like more journaling and book content from me, you can always read my book reviews on my website, bibliocreep.com, and check out some more visual content on Instagram. My handle is at biblio underscore creep. If you'd like to see a more traditional October Halloween witchy looking setup, please join me next week for my October bullet journal setup, and I will be doing a collage style again in that one. Remember, I appreciate you. Take care of yourself, take some time to do something you enjoy, drink your water, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>